Hello, everybody. Jesse Schreck here with Missions Incorporated, the podcast of Practical Missions Cohort, a ministry focused exclusively in the country of Italy to evangelize the lost, make disciples of Jesus Christ, uh, see biblical and Italian churches started, uh, Italian men trained in the pastoral ministry to oversee the flocks. And this is episode 323, and today we're doing what's called a field report from the country of Italy. So as missionaries uh, in the country of Italy, we uh, have donors and churches that are behind us, supporting us, and partnered in with the ministry, and we report back. Uh, quarterly newsletters, what we're going to look at today. And the reason we put it on the podcast is simply because not everybody gets the uh, newsletters mailed to their house or uh, in their uh, email box. Uh, but uh, this is a way for you to gather uh, in your home, perhaps, or on the go, listen to the podcast or watch on the video channel, uh, where you can hear some, some more detail to the newsletter. You can hear the newsletter we're going to go through today, but also you can get a little bit more detail behind that as we unpack it a little bit more than you can do when you simply write. You're limited to how much you can put uh, in the written format. Uh, so this is uh, what we suggest is uh, families, a great way to mix up your family devotions, something uh, special, perhaps something different, where you can gather the family together and read through a missionary newsletter hear what's going on in another part of the world, what God is doing in other places, uh, consider your own context, consider that context there, uh, learn some key ways that you can also be praying for missionaries serving in an unreached place. Uh, so uh, that's the idea behind it. Uh, we encourage you to do that uh, either with your family or with a friend or perhaps a small group, uh, gather together, listen, tune in, and then uh, dedicate some time afterwards to also pray for the ministry and, uh, in this case, the Italian people and what's going on here as we labor in the trenches doing gospel ministry. I'll run the intro, and we'll go ahead and uh, get into uh, reading the newsletter. No announcements or updates, because the entire episode today is a sort of announcement and update. So uh, we won't do any announcements. We're just going to jump right into the newsletter. But we will kick us off then with a Bible verse, uh, an exhortation, a short exhortation. Again, if this is your first time joining us, my name is Jesse Schreck, and I'm a missionary here in the country of Italy uh, since 2007, uh, serving full-time here in the country of Italy at the Lord's Service, and uh, now overseeing Practical Missions Cohort, and uh, uh, passing all that we've gained and been taught and been given, passing it on to others as well, incorporating more people into the work here in the country of Italy by God's grace, and uh, all to see uh, the gospel advanced uh, in this country, to see this, this nation uh, uh, discipled uh, by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, so... That's a little bit about me and, and who I am and what we're doing here. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, put this Bible verse on the screen for those who watch and observe. Uh, this is the verse that we have on our newsletter this time, so we're going to uh, start with this. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verse 35, we read the following. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For whoever wants, Jesus says, Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. And uh, these words came to mind as I was considering, uh, when I was writing the newsletter, uh, just, just considering what it means uh, to be at the Lord's service, what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And it's a good thing for all of us from time to time to be reminded of the core realities of what it means to be a Christian. Sometimes we forget and we have expectations or we think that we have rights and different things like this, and we forget about the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that He purchased us with His own blood, that we now actually belong uh, to Jesus Christ. We're His property, purchased by His blood, and we're alive for Him. We're now dead to our sin, as we read in Romans 6, and alive to God. We're alive now to bring glory to God, to honor Him, to know Him, to pursue Him, to enjoy Him, as we read even in the, uh, some of the confessions, uh, to enjoy Him forever, to know Him and enjoy Him. Uh, it, it's important for us to remember this. Uh, salvation, we talk about a lot, and it's very important. We need to talk about salvation and the way of salvation and how one can be saved. And it's important to make sure you understand the gospel or yeah, the gospel and, how, and the, the doctrine of salvation, how one gets saved. Very important topic. Uh, but what we can often forget is we get excited about talking about salvation or even bringing other people to Christ. We can't, though, at the same time, forget what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Salvation is free. It's a gift to be received. Uh, we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We receive the gift of eternal life. We repent of our sins. We put our trust in Jesus Christ. We are now a new creature, born of the Spirit of God, all His work from beginning to end, all glory to God and Him alone. The gift is free, but following Him, we need to always remember, is actually very costly. And Jesus made it clear throughout His ministry, His preaching ministry, uh, the way uh, 
of being his disciple, what it, what it requires of us, the dying to ourself, renouncing ourself daily, picking up our cross and coming after him. He warned folks, don't take lightly what you're coming to do. Don't get excited because I provide for you free bread or I healed so-and-so and did these miraculous things. Uh, yes, I'm doing this and I'm revealing, he says, uh, that I am God in your midst uh, and, and you need to repent and believe and trust in him. Sure, he, he's revealing that, he's doing those things and it is astounding. Uh, but to follow him, he always made it clear there's a heavy cost to that. E evaluate things before you just get all excited and come after me. And he made that clear over and over again. And it's good for us to remember, there is a cost to following Jesus Christ. You're going to feel it. There's no way to avoid that. When you obey Jesus Christ, you know the joy of obedience, but you also will feel the, the, the pain that often comes with doing the right thing. You suffer the consequences sometimes in a fallen world. You do the right thing, other people get hostile, other people get angry, other people get offended. All kinds of things can happen. And uh, there, there's this reality of suffering that goes hand in hand with being a disciple of Jesus Christ, with following after him, with obeying him, with ap applying his word in everyday life. There is a real aspect of suffering that we can't forget. It's part of the call. And uh, much more can be said about uh, the role of suffering in our uh, course. We actually have a, on, on missions, we have an upcoming lesson just on that reality of suffering and missions work and how critical they are and how they go together and they're inseparable. Uh, it's a very real thing. Uh, but I, I remember hearing, uh, I remember in doing the gospel ministry here in Italy one time, years are going by, and and I'm looking back at my life and realizing I'm not the same person that I was when I first came here. I feel like I've kind of lost myself. I'm who who am I? You know, just more and more as the Lord is sanctifying me and shaping me and molding me into the person He called me to be and to do the work that He called me to do. And I remember a brother. Uh, he was from uh, the air base over here, uh, Jared, and he. Uh, I was just talking about how, yeah, I kind of don't know who I am anymore. Like you know, I've been doing this so long and and. And he said, well, that kind of reminds me of the gospel. Like, uh, whoever loses his life for my sake in the gospels will save it, and whoever uh, save his life will lose it. There's something about that. We lose ourselves in a certain sense when, we're, when we find ourselves in Christ. Uh, don't know uh, what else I really want to say about that in this brief uh, opening devotion, but the idea, in any case, uh, is important to remember. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake in the gospels will save it. Uh, we can have everything in the world, but if we don't have Christ, we really don't have anything, actually. Or we can have nothing in the world at all. But if we do have Christ, in a very real sense, we lack nothing. We have everything in Christ. He's that satisfying. He's that uh, wonderful to know, uh, to walk hand in hand with the Lord. There's nothing quite like it. He's our maker. He's our redeemer. He's our Lord. He's our king. He's our friend. Uh, he's actually everything. Okay, so here's uh, here's what the newsletter uh, looks like. The image quality. Oh, backing it out. Didn't want to do that. I actually want to scroll on it uh, over here on this other screen. This is what the newsletter looks like. Uh, the quality of the video is not so great because our second monitor here is uh, very, very old, not very high quality. Uh, but that's the newsletter, and I'm going to be reading through this uh, for us uh, so uh, you can hear it, and I'll expound on it a little bit as we go. But you'll see some of the photos there uh, of the family. Uh, you see our, our, our three kids at the top left photo. Uh, we have Cornelius, we have Simeon, and we have Beatrice. And then uh, Mommy, Jerry V, with uh, Simeon. He's now just turned six months uh, at the time of this recording. And you see our family together here on a Lord's Day. And uh, the two kids, the older kids, after Chi Chi graduated or yeah, passed his uh, end of the year exam, uh, one of our podcast episodes from the podcast ministry for uh, PMC. There's also a picture here of uh, myself and Cornelius uh, meeting with a group of American students passing through Venice uh, to give them a Bible exhortation on a Lord's Day afternoon. And uh, our different ministries with PMC, the Italian cohort, the PMC Academia, the Missions Academia, and Missions Incorporated, the podcast. And then we have a photo here of, uh, of a uh, campaign we're doing here, Reaching the Lost on the topic of peace, talking about peace, a walk towards lasting peace. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into the section about the church planning stuff. Uh, but that has proven to be a very effective uh, tract and uh, topic for discussion, starting up gospel conversation. Everybody's longing for peace right now. And then at the end of the track here, we also, or uh, not the track, the newsletter, we see a picture of uh, Cornelius, who was out with us helping to evangelize this summer, uh, the latest tract that we're using. And uh, yeah, the vision trips, the short-term mission trip stuff, and long-term missions, all parts of the PMC ministry that is continually growing by God's grace and, uh, and increasing year after year, month after month. And, and all of that. So praise be to God. Uh, here we are. Let's read the content. Hello, dear friend and partner. We're writing to you again from Italy as we wrap up in the hot, humid summer months in the province of Venice, northeast Italy. Okay. Uh, it's been in the 90s, uh, sometimes 
this is Fahrenheit in the 90s, sometimes even over 100, numerous times you get in the car, even at nine in the morning, it's over 100 degrees in the car. Uh, so it's been very hot and humid all summer with very little rain. And by God's grace, we're doing well, though. So this is what we write in the opening paragraph. And it was unbelievably hot this summer, very dry. The grass hardly grew at all. Uh, no rain. I forgot what rain even sounded like until, which we'll get into in a moment, our vision trip group from Florida that came uh, for a seven-day trip. I think it was seven days. Uh, two of the days were rain days. We haven't seen rain in months. And then all of a sudden, our group arrives to help us, and we got rained out for two days. God was in it in any case, and we did other important things, which we'll talk about, uh, but astonishing that uh, it's, it's just been so hot this summer and uh, very, very uh, little rain. Moving on, though, Cornelius was a big help with evangelism this summer. He joined me in distributing tracts and speaking with people in the open-air markets. Uh, he also attended his first summer camps in Italy with friends from the basketball team, and he had a blast. He really did. He, he loved being there. He wanted to do more weeks, but we couldn't afford it, uh, but he did two weeks there, two separate weeks, and uh, just loved it, being with the other kids all day long, all the different games and activities that they had. Uh, got cut up one time uh, in a fall, but uh, toughened up and uh, survived. He did all right. Uh, but he really enjoyed uh, that, and he's, he's getting better each day uh, with his Italian as well as the years go by. Uh, in June, he passed his end-of-the-year exams in Italian and will begin third grade as a homeschooler this September, which has now come, and he is in the, starting the third grade uh, as a homeschooler here in Italy. He'll continue playing basketball with his local team, which has been a weekly highlight for him. It's also been a great way for us to connect with other families and build relationships over time. So uh, the basketball thing has been a wonderful activity for the whole family, actually, not just for him, uh, but it's been a great part of uh, Cornelius' life. When I'm done with this recording today, actually, we're actually going to the dentist, and uh, he has some dental work he needs to get done. It's, this is like his third uh, trip now to the dentist for some work that they're doing to fix up his teeth. Uh, just by the way, if you wanted to help support our family on a personal level, we have a private PayPal account. You can check that out through the ministry at practicalmissions.org. Go to the donate section, and then there's a, a special needs for the Shrek family. If you want to just under the table kind of way to help fund different things like getting diapers and you know random family everyday stuff or homeschool curriculum, uh, or in this case, I was just reminded that uh, we're going to have to pay for those teeth getting fixed up. If you wanted to help contribute to that through a private PayPal, not it's not a non-tax deductible donation. It's just a regular you know handing cash to a friend kind of thing. If you wanted to help contribute to that, we, we definitely welcome that and uh, would appreciate it. Uh, so pray about that, uh, but just wanted to mention it. We read on though about uh, Beatrice. Beatrice uh, is growing up to be very bright and full of character. Uh, she'll soon be turning four. And my wife and I, we talk to each other uh, kind of often lately, realizing we forget that this girl's only three years old. She's not even yet four years old because her mind seems so advanced. The way she can just go on and on and tell stories and she's so uh, present, so there since very little, uh, probably from having a bigger brother and, and learning all the things that he's learning, but a big talker <laughs> and a big singer and she's always doing discourses and talking about stuff. It feels like she, we're talking to a six or seven or eight year old, but she's actually only three. And then we get upset sometimes when she behaves like a three-year-old, but then we're reminded, oh wait, yeah, she is only a three-year-old. So it's it's helpful to remember, but by, by God's grace, she's growing uh, a lot and uh, she's now mastering the balance bike and loves to sing. The balance bike is the bike that has no pedals where you just run along and learn to coast and, and she's doing really good with that and having a great time. We had to go to the post, post office today to renew our, our visas and all that again. And uh, she went all the way on her pedalist bike today. Uh, but she also enjoys spending time with her brothers, and uh, and she, so she has a big brother and a little brother now, and uh, and she likes to talk a lot. Uh, we said here she's a big talker, unbelievable. It reminds me, I think, of my sister when she was uh, uh, younger. They always said she talked a lot. Uh, our daughter now, she she's like that. She just is constantly talking, has a lot to say. Uh, Simeon is nearly six months old. Uh, we we write here as well. Simeon Simeon is nearly six months old and is growing uh, healthy and strong. So he just turned six months actually, uh, on the 9th of September. He's uh, started rolling over on his own, and he loves being outside, uh, being held, uh, which we do often. Uh, if you're a parent, you know what that's like. Uh, you're often just uh, spending time holding babies, and that's how it goes. That's part of uh, what it means to be a parent and have numerous kids. Uh, you have one on your arm, and you carry them, and you do things. Uh, he loves exploring the world around him. He's very curious, watching his brother and his sister. And we thank the Lord for adding him to our family. Uh, he is uh, quite a delight, and we're thankful for that very low-key kind of baby. Uh, easy going for the most part. Uh, he had his first hiccup though, just uh, when we, we we had our vision trip group. And then the week after that, we did a like a five day missionary retreat that we try to do every year where we just unplug for a moment, r you know, do normal stuff like normal families, uh, make memories and, uh, and then refocus ourselves and reconnect with the Lord, get ready for the next season. And uh, on the way back, it's like an hour and a half drive to the place we go to. Uh, and uh, on the first time on the hour and a half drive back turned into like a three and a half hour drive because we would go about, uh, 
you know, we got like 30 minutes into the drive and then he had a kind of a meltdown, just did not want to be in his seat. So we had to pull over. He took some milk. We he hung out a little bit, five minutes into the next uh, part of the trip. And then he's melting down again. We had to find another place to pull over another half hour break. And it just turned into a really long drive, like three or four times we did that. Apart from that, he's been uh, really, really easy going, which has been a huge blessing. All right. Jerry V had recently, uh, has recently developed a passion for health and nutrition, uh, blessing the family with great meals, snacks, and even homemade pizza and sourdough bread. It's been fantastic. Uh, she is flourishing in her role as a mother and missionary housewife by God's grace. Her upbeat personality makes her a blessing in our local community, uh, especially among the other moms. Uh, yeah, Jerry V is doing great and uh, praise God for that. Excelling as a mother, excelling as a homeschool teacher, uh, discipling the kids and all the rest and, and running the household things, uh, doing her job there. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. The sourdough bread has been a nice delight. Also the pizza, some of the best pizza I've ever had in my life is this new recipe she got from a guy from Naples. Uh, really good stuff. The best pizza they say comes from that area. And uh, that's just been a fantastic. Yep. Uh, so I, Jesse, have uh, ad adjusted my work schedule for the month of August uh, while Italy essentially shuts down. Again, now we're already in September when this was written in August. Uh, well, Italy shuts down and people take vacations. If you don't know that, it's true. Italy basically just shuts down. Everybody disappears and then you catch up again in September. Uh, I've paused the public evangelism until September to focus on various other projects that are crucial for the longevity of both the ministry and our family. I continue to be humbled by God's grace and kindness in making me a husband, uh, father, missionary, and overseer of the practical missions ministry here in Italy. None of the good I, ha I have is deserved. I praise God for his mercy, grace, and sanctifying work. He continues to do in me with great patience. Once in a while, as you know, in life, it just kind of hits you certain things that uh, you realize, wow, I really don't deserve anything that I have. And uh, in my situation, looking back and thinking about my life, I would most likely already actually be dead if it wasn't for God's grace and him saving me, changing my heart, giving me new desires and all the rest. Uh, I, I would have just probably killed myself uh, from, you know, using drugs or something like this, just not having a desire to live or to do anything. I probably would have just wasted away my life uh, for sure. Uh, but uh, the Lord redeemed my life, and uh, here I am by His grace, and um, didn't have a really uh, close family or a Christian family growing up, and uh, missed out on a whole bunch of that, that normal stuff that a, a Christian can grow up experiencing. But now we're passing that on to our kids. We have our meals together most of the time. Uh, we have family devotions together on a regular basis, uh, and we do everything together, serve together, and uh, uh, share a common call, and it's it's, it's a wonderful thing. So uh, very humbled by all of that and to be able to do uh, all of this in a place that is uh, very much in need of the gospel. Unbelievable. Still blows my mind today, too. After all these years, the country of Italy, when I look at it and I see the churches and the realities here, still continues to just uh, blow my mind that uh, there are so few believers in this country, healthy, sound, biblical churches having an impact in their community, so few, and uh, uh, such a barren land in, in so many ways. And there is great need here. There's great opportunity as well. Uh, and, and we have, uh, we pray for great things to take place in the country of Italy uh, as the years go on. Uh, but to get there, uh, we know uh, many more Christians need to uh, live as Christians here in the country of Italy. Uh, more missionaries need to come and help impact and, and, and hit the everyday folk, bring them the gospel, bring them to Christ, and uh, see communities of believers uh, formed, biblical churches, healthy churches established uh, with long-term thinking as well to continue reaching this land. In many ways, we read here, things seem out of control back in the U.S. The, this is unsettling for missionaries who live by faith to advance the gospel abroad. Uh, so, yeah, we, we see some of the news, and now the news highlights, magnifies probably all the bad stuff going on in the States. Uh, but you know it, it, it's true, and uh, if you're watching and listening to this, that's almost like a miraculous thing, probably, because there's so much going on, it seems, back in the States with the election coming up, the assassination attempts— uh, big pharma, big uh, whatever, you know, big tech, all these crazy collaborations and illegitimate things with the government, all these different things going on. There's so much to kind of track and stay on top of if you don't want to get lost and perish, in a sense, uh, and, in the, and so much going on within the churches and the Christian community and so on. There's a lot to follow. If you actually have time and are able to follow and tune in uh, to what's going on here in Italy, uh, we thank you. Uh, we're really uh, honored that you would do that because we know there's a lot to, to follow and going on. Uh, but uh, again, back to the newsletter, though, the, the point is for the missionary looking back, it's it's unsettling for missionaries because we live by faith and we have to trust that things are well back home, that our people are, are well taken care of back home so that we can get what we need to keep uh, on the outpost here in another land in the trenches doing what we need to do. You can imagine like a soldiers in battle, if uh, 
if uh, if they look back and the hometowns are burning to the ground, uh, they're wondering, am I still going to get food? Am I still going to get ammo? Am I still going to get uh, what I need to carry out this mission and do what we have to do or not? The missionary in other places probably feels, not just us, but you know, feels these these the, these things going through his mind, through his heart uh, back in the States. It's unsettling. So we talk here about the, the rampant inflation. It affects both our supporters and us here on the field, making finances tight. We are extremely grateful, though, to God for our brothers and sisters who continue to stand with us, enabling us to reach more Italians daily for Christ. The past several years have been challenging in many ways, yet through it all, the Lord has slowly but surely carried us forward, constantly growing us to be more Christ-like in character, love, faithfulness, boldness, and faith. Since we first uh, were led to start PMC, we've had to do a lot of additional work to establish the ministry for long-term impact. We believe, though, that the fruit of our labor is finally coming to fruition. With numerous elements now in place, we pray that, if it pleases the Lord, things will really start to take off. Yeah, so, uh, you know, recently, just a little testimony I guess I could add here, uh, just thinking of uh, certain things we had to go through and endure uh, here on the mission field and uh, waiting for helpers, praying for those uh, laborers to be sent out into the harvest to join in with us and so on. And uh, and then thinking, uh, it came to mind, John Bunyan uh, in that prison cell for years and years and um, and all the pain and stuff that he had to endure there, uh, but yet the Lord was with him through it all, and he was able to stay productive in there. It wasn't an ideal situation for any Christian, wasn't healthy for his soul, none of that, but because he depended on the Lord, he trusted in the Lord and God's providence, God had him there for a reason, he was still fruitful, he was still productive, and he created stuff that had a long-term impact and is still having impact hundreds of years later, right? And so that's the idea, uh, even in our situation, trusting in God and that he has a plan and all of it, and all these years of, of the groundwork that we've been doing, have their purpose, and God is at work in those things. In September, we'll be hosting a vision trip from Fort Myers, Florida, which has already happened, actually. We'll talk about that in just a second. In October and November, we'll be hosting a family for a month as they come to serve alongside of us. We have two potential PMC short-term cohorts lined up for the summer of 2025. Now we, are, we, we pray for God's help to form a new band of long-term missionaries to impact this area for uh, of Italy for Christ. We walk by faith. All right, so we mentioned here this idea of uh, a vision trip from Fort Myers, Florida, McGregor Baptist Church. They have come from the 3rd to the 9th. They were here uh, in the country of Italy with us, and what a refreshing, amazing, perfect time that it was, actually. We had those two days of rain. We also had uh, some problems with our van having to get fixed. But all in all, uh, the time together was really a, a great blessing. We had wonderful fellowship first of all, because these are people that we know for the most part, except for one person we met for the first time. Uh, but we reconnected uh, as friends and prayed together, talked, wonderful conversations. Uh, we also did some great outreach. In particular, uh, the most exciting moment for me was actually our first morning out doing uh, piazza ministry. So uh, handing out tracts and talking with people in the piazza, in the market, the open air marketplace. While, uh, so we had, we had two groups going out of two groups of two going out in different areas parts of the town, uh, distributing tracks house to house into the coffee bars. Wonderful. That's going on. And then there was uh, myself, my son Cornelius, Arcadio from uh, Salerno was here with us visiting, and he joined for the evangelism. Dear brother in the Lord, very thankful for him. And then Russell was all, Pastor Russell was with us, and the four of us are in the open air market doing evangelism there, handing out tracks. And uh, I never evangelized together with, um, with Arcadio before, uh, but uh, man, what an exciting and blessing, uh, great blessing that was for me. Just, uh, he's got these, these big eyes. He's very passionate when he talks. He's uh, well-rooted in scripture, in, in theology and doctrine. He's a dear brother. Love and appreciate him very much. And we get into the piazza. We, we never evangelized together before, but all of a sudden didn't have to give any indications to him. You know, I don't know what his experience with evangelism is, but he knows exactly what he's doing. He gets right to it, takes on two, three guys at one time. He's evangelizing them for about a half hour. Wonderful conversation he's having there, challenging their worldview and pushing them, pointing them towards Jesus Christ and the gospel. And then uh, my son and I were engaging, handing out tracts. Russell's going back and forth doing his thing, handing out tracts. Tracts are all over the place. Conversations are happening. People we're talking to, Arcadio's talking to people. Uh, and then one thing after one person or one couple after another, just all morning long. Wonderful conversations happening, great stuff going on, all while other tracks are going out in other parts of the town at the same time. As a missionary who's been in the trenches now for a number of years alone, waiting for more missionaries and so on delighted my soul. Pure joy. Wonderful and exciting. And uh, if nothing else happened, I told the guys on that trip, already that was exciting enough for me. In one morning together, all of us doing our part, 
I evangelized more people in one morning than I do maybe in a month or two months normally. It's just, it was fantastic. Really, really full and great time. The gospel going out, people hearing, people being engaged with the good news and so on. And uh, even a local official here was all, Arcadi got to talk to him and hear his story and bring him the gospel. Wonderful stuff going on. Uh, so that was super exciting. Uh, we also did some puppet ministry, uh, got rained out the one day, which is a bummer, but we used that time to get, uh, this group was very generous and helpful. They saw our family and some of our needs to help meet those needs, gather supplies, bless the kids, encourage the kids. The kids got to see, whoa, mommy and daddy, they're not alone. Like people care and people are here and people are coming. And Chi Chi was very excited showing them how to do the tracks and this different stuff. And, and, uh, they're blessing the kids, helping the kids, you know, uh, it was just everything about it was just such a wonderful time. So if any of you guys get to hear this uh, from McGregor Baptist, thank you guys for coming. Thank you so much. Really hope we can do it again soon. And I look forward to Lord willing, seeing you guys maybe end of January, February in that time at the missions conference, uh, there in the States. Uh, but that was super, that was very exciting. And just, uh, we'll take that moment maybe just to mention briefly, quickly, if uh, you and your church would be interested in doing something like that, this was not a, a full-on missions trip, a 10-day trip. This was a shorter, I think it was five nights, six days kind of trip, what we call a, a, a vision trip, where you can come experience the spiritual realities of Italy, immerse yourself in the rich cultures and deep-rooted uh, history while learning the contextual nuances, capture a vision of the need and opportunities to take back to your church. Check out, uh, if you want to know more about that, practicalmissions.org forward slash vision hyphen trips, and you can read up a little bit more about that, or you can contact us, info at practicalmissions.org as well, to learn more about uh, what uh, what that looks like and how you uh, or your church can bring out a group of four to five people to do something very similar. Uh, we take care of all the logistics for you, uh, transportation once you're on field, all the food, lodging, all that stuff, and then together we, we do ministry and talk about the realities of Italy, different things like this, and then you get a day off in there as well to explore the culture. Uh, the group in this case went to the islands of Venice to explore, and they spent a day there uh, enjoying that. Uh, so, yeah, great opportunity, and it was a huge blessing for us. Now, the, the difference, though, between that and uh, the short-term cohorts, uh, which we mentioned as well in this uh, newsletter, is the short-term cohorts. Uh, this would be a 10-day trip, and we're scheduling, looking to host two groups next summer, a 10-day trip, and it's a little bit more intense. So uh, the vision trip is toned down a little bit. The evenings we didn't really go out except for once because there weren't many people, especially that time of the year. In the summer, so in the summer on a short-term cohort, we would do the, the distributions in the morning, marketplace, that kind of stuff. Uh, park ministry in the afternoons, going to different parks, bringing the kids, uh, uh, yeah, the puppets, the stories, the face painting, uh, all that good stuff, the music, the balloons. And then, um, and then we would also go out in the evening after dinner and do uh, some dramas and, and piazza evangelism in the evenings when there's large crowds of people in the summer frequenting the piazza. So uh, if that's something you're interested in as well, uh, be sure to check out uh, uh, practicalmissions.org to learn more about that too. All right, back to the newsletter. Uh, previously, we mentioned our need for a living situation more suitable for hosting other families for meals, uh, gatherings around God's word, and even homeschool meetups. Rather than renting any large place, uh, we are any large place that comes along, we are seeking the Lord's guidance in acquiring something strategic that can serve the ministry for long-term impact, something that can also provide our growing family a place to stay and flourish. An old agriturismo, as they call it, or farmhouse, or rustico, uh, these kinds of things, uh, that we could repurpose for the ministry would be ideal. Some neighborhood friends have graciously taken their own initiative to search for options for us and the ministry which we didn't even ask them about, and but they're almost on a daily basis sending us links, sending us this, sending us that, talking, trying to find the right situation. Uh, but the idea is that uh, we want, we're, we're thinking long-term, long-term vision here for what we want to do in Italy, thinking not just you know a couple of years, but the next 30 years, maybe 40, 50, thinking long-term and, and how can we reach the most amount of people, see some healthy churches started, pastoral men trained and equipped, pluralities of elders, overseeing churches, sister churches that uh, together are reaching these areas and so on and shepherding their people. Uh, so... We get into it then in this next paragraph, but but that, that's the idea. Rather than just rent something and, and whatever, uh, wouldn't be bad. We might just end up having to do that depending on, uh, you know, what, what we can find. But the idea is uh, what we can strategically put us uh, in a certain place that allows us to hit a few different areas that are very important here in this region. Uh, and then we could also be hosting all those short-term groups that come, new missionaries long-term when they get here, give them a place to establish themselves and then go and find a place comfortably, uh, something that fits for their family in the right area, all that kind of stuff. Something we're praying about, and we invite you to pray about that with us, okay? Uh, but now we read on here. We are prayerfully considering relocating to a smaller town called, in this case, 
Mogliano, Mogliano Veneto. It's a 28,000 inhabitants, much smaller than the town we're in now, but it's, it's just 15 minutes away from Mestre, which is about 147,000 inhabitants. And it sits between the cities of Mestre and Treviso, which is another important town in this region of 85,000 inhabitants. So you can imagine, uh, you know, just... Uh, there's the islands of Venice where nobody really is. I'm hitting my buttons, but it's not working. Okay. Uh, the islands of Venice down here. Mestre is right on the, the inside. You come up. And then uh, above that is Treviso. Right in the middle is this town called uh, Moliano. 15 minutes from there to Treviso. 15 minutes from there to Mestre. Uh, kind of in the middle. And uh, it, nobody's reaching that town at all. There's a lot of potential there to, to cover those three areas. We could think about it for the next many, many years and see stuff happen, and it's totally doable. Now, if the Lord wills, we could plan ourselves there for long-term impact on the region. With a band of missionaries, we could reach the people of all three cities and, by God's grace, see a biblical church formed in each town. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Just days after we began praying about this, a woman from Moyano, who had received one of our gospel tracts, reached out to us. So we just started evangelizing that town within just a few days— and already somebody called us from that town and reached out. Uh, we have since met with her and her friend several times to open the Bible, teach the gospel, and pray. They desire a church in this town. The church they have attended until now, which is not in that town, they had to travel to go to, it has not taught the main thing well. I, won't, I don't mention people's names just for their own uh, privacy, and, and people don't like that stuff, and we respect that. Uh, but these two ladies, wonderful folks, uh, as in many places in Italy, uh, the Bible is utilized in the church, but the gospel message and sound exegesis are often lacking, and that's the real tragedy of the situation. Uh, so we humbly ask you to pray for God's leading with these dear folks as they receive the gospel of grace and the whole counsel of God through us. Please also pray for financial provisions and new missionaries so this ministry can become well-established for long-term impact in this region. So there is potential already for something happening that God is doing in that place. And it was astonishing to me just, uh, you know, we're meeting together a few times and talking about the Bible and, and leading Bible studies and this and that, and I'm kind of gauging where these folks are at, what they believe, what they understand. And I just proposed the question, something that I heard from Ray Comfort years ago that I find to be very helpful. Actually, when someone confesses to be a believer, it's good to know what is it they believe exactly, because everybody believes everything or, you know, something, right? Uh, but what is it they actually are trusting in? And so I proposed the question, hey, listen, let's just imagine I got hit, because uh, she mentioned that the one the one lady mentioned her daughter is not so sure about the salvation of their her dad, right, Her the, this lady's husband. And uh, is he actually safe? She's not so sure. And I said, well, let's let's pose the question. Let's imagine I get hit by a car. I only got three minutes left to live. I'm bleeding. It's just pouring out. I'm on the ground. I'm dying. There's no way to save me. And I just don't want to go to hell. I want to be in heaven. I want to be with the Lord. What do I got to do to be saved? I'm asking you, telling you, pleading with you to tell me what I need to do. What would you tell me? And uh, so I let that go. Uh, and uh, both of them, I let them answer, let them take their time. And uh, all, all truth being said, they really didn't have a good answer. They didn't understand the gospel well. So they had been frequenting a church for years and years and years at this point and uh, taught all kinds of different things about the Bible, all kinds of things about God, about the gospel. But they were never taught the key message, the central idea of the good news and what it is, why it is good news, and the reality of our our depravity, the reality of our fallenness, the reality of our sin, and what that means before a God who's three times holy, how we can be saved, how we can be right with God, no one ever taught them. So they have pastors uh, who are teaching all kinds of stuff, but the essential thing that they need to know was never actually taught to them, years and years. Now, it could be that both of them, for some reason, just didn't ever learn it, even though it was taught, but it seems that uh, it's just not being taught, because the type of church that they're coming from, I'm familiar with, and uh, the stuff they teach is often very erroneous and totally missing the mark. So it was no surprise to me, actually. Uh, but tragedy, and that happens, and uh, so now they got to finally hear the gospel and the way of salvation, repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, those key essentials to understanding how to get saved. It's not by our works, it's not by anything we do, it's by repenting, acknowledging, agreeing with God that we are sinners in need of salvation, that God is holy, turning from our sin, repenting, asking forgiveness from God, and embracing by faith Jesus Christ, the one who did live perfectly for us, who fulfilled the law of God in our place in a way that we couldn't, and then died the death that we deserve for us, going to the cross, carrying our sin there, taking the wrath of God the Father that was on us, onto himself, and then paid in full with his blood, gave his life, died, rose again on the third day, and is now reigning and ruling as Lord over all, the Lord of lords, the King of all kings. Uh, we repent and we believe in Him, trust in Him, not ourselves. Not, it's nothing we do, it's what He did for us. And uh, they're finally hearing this, and this is wonderful, and it seems like they're responding in the right way. So all that to say, uh, it seems the Lord is at work there, and we're going to continue meeting now. We took a little break because we had uh, the, the vision trip group, and then we had our off week, and then one of them was on vacation. It looks like we'll be meeting up again either later this week 
or next week. So continue to pray for uh, this thing happening over there. But that's the idea, something we just invite you to pray about. I won't go on too much longer about that because we're running out of time and i got to take my son to the dentist. All right, church planting, uh, the outreach ministry of Vera Vita, okay, the uh, true life outreach stuff here. Our evangelism efforts, we read, uh, this summer included handing out tracts in the open-air market in Mestre and distributing gospel literature throughout the local towns and villages. We wrote a new tract on the subject of true and lasting peace, which is resonating with the people. By God's grace, this has proven to be a great door opener for evangelizing. True peace is found only in Christ. People in post-Catholic and secular Italy today, more than ever, as I notice it, are longing for peace because they suffer from anxiety, stress, and a general sense of hopelessness. The numerous lies and deceptions of the world are destructive in nature. It's a great time to be evangelizing in Italy. Uh, many tracts have been distributed, conversations have been had, and people have heard the gospel for the first time. We pray for more people to join us in this work. Uh, so in all my years in Italy, I haven't seen uh, as great of a time for evangelism as now. I mean, now there's just a, there's a category in the people's minds. They see something is just not right. Some things don't line up. I have been lied to. I have been deceived. What is the truth? Why does it matter? There's a category for the gospel now in their mind. When you go to them and you talk with them and evangelize them, you can help them to see, well, if you want to believe that you're a monkey, that you evolved from stardust and all that kind of stuff, uh, you can't really complain about people not treating you the way you like because no one knows what's right and what's wrong. There is no absolute truth. There is no standard. Uh, so it's everybody just doing what is pleasing to him. If people want to kill off a whole bunch of people, uh, good for them, I guess, because you can't really say it's wrong. Whereas with a Christian worldview, we have an understanding of who we are, why we have dignity, why we have value, because we're people made in the image of God. And you know what's right, you know what's wrong, and God's law comes to us to reveal to us as well our need for a Savior. And He did all this for us, we just need to do this, all glory to Him, and, and you can have hope, life, salvation, you know, it's just a wonderful time uh, to be engaging lost folks. So, uh, praise God for that. Crazy times that we're living in, it's not fun, but this is the point to get people's attention. God brings judgment on nations. He, he allows chaos or even causes it at times to get people's attention so the gospel can go forward, it can resonate and make sense, and they can be called out of the darkness into his light. Their eyes can be open. Uh, this fall, we'll resume our evangelism efforts uh, with our helpers from Florida, which they already came and went, as we mentioned. Uh, we pray to make more contacts, and we did. Uh, with that vision trip. Uh, we also hope to offer free English courses to the local community when another family joins us for a month this October and November. Now, that's the uh, the Crider family. They're uh, coming on the 14th of October. They'll be here, and we have everything set up for them, and uh, we're now looking to put together an English course, a uh, four-week course, two meetings per week, uh, gathering some folks in for some conversational English just to bless them and uh, and do all that. That's, that'll be one of the things that they're working on with us when they're here, so you can pray for that as well. Back to the newsletter, though, uh, Practical Missions Cohort, our final section as we close out. Our online courses for the PMC Missions Academia are coming together slowly but surely. The arrival of our third child and the lack of a formed band of missionaries here on the field have slowed our production. Not as far along with that as I would like to be. So many ideas, so many things. Everything's mapped out ready. I just need to be able to block out the time and get stuff recorded, get stuff put together. And uh, But when I'm having to do that and all the other stuff, it's a little hard. Uh, so... Uh, pray for me for that. I really want to get that moving forward. Hopefully this fall we'll get back to that. Um, and then also, yeah, carrying a baby a lot, uh, that, that makes it a bit of a challenge too. Uh, we pray to make more progress in the next season and we welcome your support for this. Yep. Okay. Most importantly in this season, however, is the need to recruit more long-term missionaries, fellow soldiers of, of Christ willing to lay down their lives to see the gospel advance in this part of the world. One of our main prayer requests is this in this time. God has missionaries out there. The harvest is plentiful. They're out there. We need to find them. They need to find us, and we need to help them get here uh, to join in on the work. Uh, for those interested in long-term missions in Italy with PMC, we now recommend starting a new uh, program we have here for getting folks involved long-term. You start uh, with a PMC vision trip with a few people from their church, uh, including at least one pastor. This provides a great opportunity for potential missionaries to experience the ongoing ministry on the field, while getting to know us as well. It helps. Uh, it also helps the church family understand uh, the realities of Italy and the roles that they could play in partnering with PMC. If there is continued interest and things are agreed upon with the home church and PMC, we recommend then a one to three month trip to serve and learn the lay of the land. Uh, we get to know each other and all of that. Uh, this allows potential missionaries to experience more, more fully what it's like to live uh, uh, in the land of Italy and to serve Jesus here with us, and it helps us uh, evaluate if the ministry is 
actually a good fit. Uh, if you know anyone interested in serving full-time in Italy, please uh, introduce them to us or send them our way. And then uh, all of this is possible only with your loving and generous prayer and financial support. Thank you for choosing to partner with us in the work of rediscipling, transforming the nation of Italy with the truth of the gospel. To continue this ministry in Italy, we now uh, need to increase our family support by about 40%. If you are not yet a partner, we invite you to prayerfully consider joining us as a monthly partner for perhaps a one to three year commitment. May the Lord lead you and may Christ be ever praised. Lastly, we hope to visit uh, the U.S. either late this fall or possibly during the winter for a four-week trip to see friends and family and promote the mission with various churches and groups. We'll keep you updated as this trip develops. To God alone the glory, Jesse and Jerry V and all of us at PMC. Now, the quick update on that is uh, we're no longer coming in the fall. It looks like we're coming uh, the end, second half of January, first half of February, maybe the last week of January to, you know, four weeks from there. Into, so into February, right, in that time. January, February will be more likely the, the four-week trip. Now, that's when it'll be, okay? Uh, now, we close out. We say this, uh, now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless, with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. That's Jude, verse 24 and 25. We also have some prayer requests. All right, the prayer requests this time. Uh, renewal of our visas for the whole family in Italy. A pursuit of Italian citizenship. I've been in the country, uh, you have to be here in the country 10 years to become a citizen if you want to. I've been here, I think, like 16 years or so since 2007. You do the math. I don't know what that is, but yeah, over 15 years. And uh, I realized uh, I'm getting tired of renewing permessos or green, you know, green cards, whatever they call them, uh, visas all the time. Every time you have a new child or change town, you have to update all these documents. It's expensive. It's tedious. It's not fun. Uh, but the Lord has helped us. We, we, we can do it, and we can basically stay as long as we want in Italy. But uh, having a citizenship might now have its advantage, especially if we're going to be acquiring stuff for the mission and all the rest and uh, setting in for a long-term impact. Uh, we're pursuing that now, and it's actually much cheaper than I thought. I thought it would cost thousands of dollars. I come to find out it's only $250 plus $140 for somebody to handle all the paperwork for you. So it's totally doable. Uh, we're thinking of doing that, and we're in the process now. We just submitted documents this morning to get our visas renewed because now we have Simeon. Uh, but we invite uh, your prayer for that. Pray for the family to flourish as we homeschool and minister abroad, uh, okay, uh, as we start the homeschooling again and with the homeschool group. Pray for a core group of soundly saved believers to solidify, whether in this immediate time where we are now or the one that we talked about previously, which is just 15 minutes away. Pray for salvations of entire families and individuals, and then more long-term and short-term missionaries to apply and get accepted with PMC. Pray for that as well. Funds uh, for, so that we can purchase a modest facility for PMC in this part of Italy, and then uh, monthly support, as we mentioned, 40% increase we need. Uh, production of the courses at the PMC Mission Academia. And then the uh, Vera Vita outreach, all the different aspects of that, from the street evangelism, piazza evangelism, to the house-to-house -house visits, the media ministry as well, the podcasts, the videos uh, that are impacting lives, and uh, that, that God would use that to lead others to Him, to Christ. And then uh, uh, we're also praying for this, a podcast and video producer to join the ministry. This could be a great full-time position for somebody in the ministry here in Italy, uh, for both PMC and the Vera Vita Outreach, dedicating the majority of our time to production of our podcasts and videos because we have numerous podcasts and videos and uh, we need helping hands to actually make all that stuff happen so we can produce more of everything and better uh, at everything we do as well. Guys, uh, there's so much more I could say, but I'll stop there just be, uh, for the sake of time uh, because uh, I do have to get my son to the dentist. Uh, thank you for tuning in, though. Uh, again, as I mentioned, there's tons of stuff to be listening to today. Uh, and I appreciate that you spend a little bit of your time uh, with us. Uh, thank you as well for praying for those things. And if you already are a ministry partner, thank you so much. You are the backbone of this ministry, making all of this stuff that we're doing, that God is doing, possible. Uh, it's through the collaboration that all this stuff happens. The sacrificial giving and the real time dedicated to praying for us. That's why we're flourishing. It's for no other reason. It's God's grace. So thank you. And uh, until the next time, hopefully in the next weeks, we'll be having... Uh, normal content going out as well, different uh, lessons and talks about missions, evangelism, Roman Catholicism, uh, apologetics, uh, all kinds of different stuff uh, related to the work of uh, living a purposeful life at the Lord's service as the kingdom advances. Thanks again for tuning in, and God bless you. Until the next time, ciao, ciao.